Hello and welcome to another TLDR Explained video. In this one, we're going to be looking at Welsh independence. Now, this is a topic we discussed in passing in a video we made on the Internal Markets Bill about a month ago, and it got some interest, so we thought we should dive in and make a full video on it. Before we start though, I just wanted to let you know that yesterday we released a new episode of our new podcast, Politics Unpacked. Now, I think our viewers will enjoy all of the episodes we've released so far, but I especially want to call out yesterday's, as it talks about this very issue. In the episode, the TLDR team debate whether devolution has worked or just led to the collapse of the UK. You can find a link to the video and the podcast in the description. So, why did we first mention this topic in a video on the Internal Market Bill? Well, two reasons. Firstly, Jeremy Miles, a Welsh Labour MP and Welsh Brexit Minister, had just written a letter to Michael Gove and Alok Sharma warning them that the Internal Market Bill would accelerate the breakup of the union. This wasn't because the IMB breaks international law, which was the reason that most people didn't like it, but rather because the IMB rescinds certain devolved powers. Basically, to guarantee a frictionless internal market within the UK, the IMB returns some previously devolved powers to Westminster, so that we don't end up with a situation where food standards are different in Scotland and England. This was originally meant to be done consensually, via common frameworks, but the government has just decided to take these powers back. Anyway, Jeremy Miles might have had a point, and this is the other reason we mentioned it in the video. Polling has shown a surge in support for Welsh independence. Historically, support for Welsh independence has hovered around 15%. However, in recent YouGov polls, support for Welsh independence seems to have increased to above 30%. A poll in September 2019 found that 24% of Welsh people support independence, with 52% opposing, and the remaining 24% as don't knows. If we exclude the don't knows, and pollsters often do, this comes to around a 32% support for Welsh independence. To give you a rundown of all of the YouGov polls conducted since then, one in June found 27% support, one in July found 32, one in August found 32 again, including a majority of Welsh Labour members, and the most recent one in October found 30% support. Basically, support for Welsh independence seems to be at about 32%. Now, you might be thinking at this point that 32% is nowhere near enough to get you a referendum, a let alone win in that referendum, and you might be right. But as we point out in the Internal Market Bill video, previous polling has found that the Welsh are more likely to support independence if Scotland goes independent first, and even more so if they can rejoin the EU. A 2016 poll found that support jumped from 19-24% to 24 if Scotland were independent, and even higher to 35% if Welsh were able to become a member of the EU. So, doing some back-of-the-napkin calculations, if an independent Scotland makes support for Welsh independence jump by a factor of 1.25% as it did in the 2016 poll, that means that an independent Scotland, which looks increasingly likely, would result in 40% support for Welsh independence, and takes Welsh independence from basically Lib Dem levels of support to Labour levels of support. Furthermore, if the prospect of EU membership makes support for independence jump by a factor of 1.8% as it did in 2016, then if Scotland were to demonstrate that a British country could go independent and then join the EU, then you might expect support for Welsh independence to hit as high as 57%. But there are some good reasons to doubt these numbers. First, and most obviously, our back-of-the-napkin calculations assume that the absolute level of support for independence has no relationship to the effect of Scottish independence or the prospect of EU membership on support for independence. This is obviously wrong. To take an extreme case, if support was already at 70%, then the prospect of membership couldn't increase that support by a factor of 1.8, otherwise we'd end up with more than 100% support. It's likely that, as support for independence goes up, other variables, like the prospect of EU membership or Scotland leading the way, end up making less difference. Probably because some of those voters, who are only pro-independence if Wales could join the EU in 2016, are just flat-out pro-independence by now. The second reason for scepticism is that Wales has historically had pretty low levels of nationalism. 
As we mentioned at the start of the video, it is generally hovered at around 15%. And that's worth comparing to Scotland, which at least at the moment is still part of the UK. Although polling is scarce, support for Scottish nationalism never really dropped below 40% since 1998. So it's hard to imagine Welsh nationalism consolidating this current surge in nationalism into a major political movement in the same way that happened in Scotland. Thirdly, it's hard to see how a referendum actually happened. Again, to use Scotland as an example. They only got a referendum after the SNP won an outright majority in the Scottish Assembly in the 2017 election. Now, this is even harder than it sounds, because the Scottish Assembly, and the Welsh one for that matter, use an electoral system called the Alternative Member System, or AMS, instead of First Past the Post. We won't go into the details, but each voter gets a constituency and a regional vote, and the outcome should be broadly proportional. In 2011, the SNP won a slim four-seat majority, with 45% of the constituency vote and 44% of the regional vote. Furthermore, this took time. In the 2003 election, the SNP only got 24% of the constituency vote and 21% of the regional vote. In 2007, they did make gains, winning 33% and 31% respectively before finally winning the majority with 45% and 44% in 2011. And the thing is that it's hard to see the same thing happening in Wales. The SNP equivalent in Wales is probably Ply Cymru. They're the largest Welsh nationalist party in the Welsh Assembly, and they want a, quote, exploratory referendum, and they've been around since devolution in 1997. The problem is that in the 2016 Welsh Assembly election, they won only 12 of the 60 seats in the Welsh Parliament, with 20% of the constituency vote and 21% of the regional vote. Now, these are basically the same numbers the SNP had in 2003, but that doesn't mean that you should expect Plaid Cymru to win a majority in eight years' time, because the next Welsh Assembly elections are due for May of next year and recent polling suggests that Ply can expect to do about as well as they did in 2016, with about 20% of constituency and regional vote, suggesting they're not on quite the same trajectory the SNP were. Anyway, that's the long and short of it, and while support for Welsh independence is rising, it's hard to see how they get a referendum. Not to say that it's impossible, but as the SNP know, independence isn't easy. Be sure to let us know what you think about this and Welsh independence more generally in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed this video, then be sure to check out the podcast I mentioned earlier. The link to that's in the description. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we release a new video. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name at the end of videos, then you too can back us on Patreon. The link to that's in the description.